It's no secret that obesity is a worldwide pandemic that quite literally continues to grow. Over the past 20 years, in the United States, the prevalence of obesity has increased from about 30% all the way up to about 42%. And it is well documented that obesity can lead to many different medical problems like cardiovascular disease, stroke, diabetes, metabolic uh, syndrome, and even certain cancers. Now, fat can be stored in different areas. So fat that is stored in the abdominal cavity between the abdominal organs is called visceral fat. Then there's subcutaneous fat. That's the fat that sits right below our level of skin. Now, studies show that visceral fat is much more detrimental to people's health. When comparing calorie restriction versus exercise, previous studies, meta-analysis, have shown that calorie restriction does a better job at reducing overall total body weight. However, it is not as reliable as reducing visceral fat. And there are studies that show that exercise can reduce visceral fat. So the question is, is which one works better? Is it exercise or is it calorie restriction that works best in reducing visceral fat? So stick around and let's find out. Hi, I'm Dr. Edmund Kleeman. I'm an orthopedic surgeon here in New York City. I specialize in sports medicine and arthroscopic surgery. In a meta-analysis that was just published this year, they looked at 40 studies with over 2,000 patients. And these studies were comparing people who either did exercise or calorie restriction to try to reduce visceral fat. And these were in people who were overweight or obese. And they typically used either MRI or CT scan to evaluate the visceral fat, again, visceral fat being the fat in between the abdominal organs. And also they sometimes would just use waist circumference as a measure as well. So the results of this meta-analysis found that both exercise and calorie restriction effectively reduce visceral fat and waist circumference. And additionally, they found that exercise demonstrated a dose-response relationship, meaning that increasing amounts of exercise translated into greater reductions in visceral fat and waist circumference. In another very similar meta-analysis that looked at over 100 studies with almost 5,000 patients, they also looked at the differences between exercise or calorie restriction for reducing visceral fat. In this study, they found that both exercise and diet, calorie restriction, caused a loss of visceral fat. Now, when they compared diet to uh, exercise, they did find that diet caused a larger weight loss in general. But with regard to visceral fat, there was a trend that exercise seemed to reduce more of it. During exercise training, what happens is that we have an increase in our lean body mass. Things like muscle, bone, even circulating blood plasma, they increase. So if we are trying to use exercise to reduce our weight or more specifically visceral fat, when you get on the scale, okay, you may not see as much of a dip in your total weight because it's a balance here. You're increasing lean body mass, but reducing your visceral fat. This was seen in this meta-analysis where they found that those who were exercising, even if there was no weight loss, meaning they got on the scale and didn't appreciate a weight loss, exercise was still related to a 6% decrease in visceral fat. So there was an improvement in their body composition. Again, there's obviously an increase in their lean body mass and a reduction in their visceral fat. Whereas in those people who are doing calorie restriction, someone who is just using diet, and let's say they weren't able to lose any weight. Well, if they weren't able to lose any weight on the diet, they found that their visceral fat obviously didn't change at all. So here we could see the benefits of doing exercise. Despite the larger effect that calorie restriction diet has on reducing overall body weight, exercise seems to be superior in reducing visceral fat. And in this study, they calculated that a 5% loss in body weight after exercise training is associated with a 21% reduction in visceral fat. But in those people who were doing calorie restriction, a diet, if they lost 5% of their body weight, it was only associated with a 13% reduction in visceral fat. Again, because some of that loss in weight was actually coming from lean body mass, things like muscle and bone. So again, we can appreciate the benefits of exercise in reducing visceral fat. Let's wrap up this video and go over a few key points. 
Number one, visceral fat is a more important indicator of a risk to health than just general overall weight or BMI. Number two, both calorie restriction, a diet, and exercise can both be successful in reducing visceral fat. Number three, weight loss through calorie restriction, unfortunately, can also lead to a reduction in lean body mass, meaning things like muscle. Now, for older people who already are suffering from a loss of muscle mass as they get older, this can have a significant risk on them, particularly for their physical function. In contrast, for those people who are using exercise to help reduce their visceral fat, they don't have to worry about losing muscle. As a matter of fact, they should hopefully be able to increase their muscle mass. And finally, for those people who are exercising and do not see a reduction significantly of their overall weight, not to worry because the exercise overall is improving your body composition, meaning less visceral body fat, more muscle. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please click the like button below and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in my next video or in my office.